Shut up and sit down. There's a no, fight no. going on out there, gentlemen. Why don't you get in it? Clear eyes, full hearts. You ready, champ? I've been ready for this my whole life. The Chicago Bears select. Ooh, yeah. Greetings, friends. Welcome into a special supplemental episode of the AFDE Show. I'm Jason Ferrari. Starting now and extending through the entire NFL season, I'll be doing an in-depth analysis of all things Chicago Bears, as well as other NFL news stories that are going on. The show will lovingly be referred to as Jason discusses specific topics. Today, I will go over the Bears offseason so far, then break down the upcoming NFL draft. Uh, Through that, hopefully we can sort out who will most likely be available for the Bears with the eighth pick. And remember, guys, this is part of the AFDE show. So as always, if you have any comments, opinions, feedback, you can tweet us at AFDE show or shoot us an email at AFDE show at gmail.com. Sincerely, friends, I really appreciate you checking out this show and uh, hopefully you come back for more. All that being said, let's talk about some damn football. Before we get into any of the uh, the draft stuff, I definitely want to do a super brief recap of um, the Bears offseason so far. I've overheard a couple of people saying that they don't feel like that they've done enough. I agree. I don't know that there ever is enough uh, to do in free agency other than to kind of backfill. But if you really take a deep dive into what the Bears have done this offseason, they've a lot of things going on. They actually have re-signed a bunch of players. Uh, They've added a bunch of new players. They've brought starters back and created depth and brought in some new starters. So I'm just going to fire through it real quick. At quarterback position, obviously Mitch Trubisky's QB1 uh, going into his second season. Coach Matt Nagy brought in Chase Daniel, who he's familiar with. And all signs are pointing to him being a very, very, very good teacher, which will be helpful for Mitch in that QB room and, you know, on the field after reps and things like that. I don't think he's the most amazing guy on the field, but as far as somebody who's going to help him in the room, I don't know that there could be anyone better uh, given the fact that he's so familiar with uh, Nagy's offense. And then also Tyler Bray, who is also from the Chiefs, who also has experience in the offense. So I think QB depth is okay for now. I wouldn't be surprised if they brought in uh, maybe an undrafted free agent or even drafted someone late as a developmental guy. Uh, but we'll we'll dig we'll dig into that and we'll see what happens there. From the running back position, uh, no big major new acquisitions. They did uh, resign Benny Cunningham. Uh, I think that was a good move. He's good for depth. He's actually good at catching out of the backfield, and he's also someone who can do returns. So I think that was a smart re-signing. Wide receiver, I can't even believe that I see what's on this paper in front of me right now. I mean, it's like a polar opposite of last year's wide receiving core. They brought in Allen Robinson as their number one guy, who when is you know when he's healthy, he is an absolute monster, and um, it sounds like his rehab is going well. And hopefully he'll be ready for training camp. But that was a huge addition. Number one wide receiver in free agency. Number one target. Bears were able to sign him. Uh, As someone who people like to call him a slot guy. But if you really look at Taylor Gabriel, another wide receiver that they brought in, he didn't play a ton of snaps in the slot. He can, but you really can line him up all over. Um, He's a little short at 5'8", but the guy's, uh, you know, he's got blazing speed, really good hands, smart route runner. So that was a good pickup. Uh, more recently, over the last two weeks, we actually picked up uh, Benny Fowler, who used to play for the Broncos. He's about 6'1", 212, and he has very good hands. He's had a couple of good seasons, but I think he got buried on the depth chart over in Denver. Uh, we just brought in Marlon Brown, who was with, I believe, the Ravens. Uh, he's 6'5", 214. He was out of football last year, uh, but when he was playing, he played at a pretty high level. I think he had like 66 receptions for 500 plus yards and a good amount of TDs. He was out of football last year with a back injury, but it sounds like he came and he tried out for the Bears at their mini camp, voluntary mini camp uh, this past week, and they signed him to a contract. So, you know, there's no guarantees he makes the roster, but at least there's a big body there to challenge people in camp. Rolling to tight end, they brought in Trey Burton. I think we all know the story there. Uh, he's going to be probably the starter, but I guess co-starter with Shaheen. They play different roles, but Shaheen can move around. Burton's more of the wide receiver type tight end. You can move, you can put him in the slot, you can put him on the outside, and then Dion Sims will continue to play the blocking role. But I think that they're, they're going to try to get the ball in his hands a little bit more. 
offensive line they didn't really bring in anybody. Just uh, they brought in Earl Watford, who is a guard. A lot of playing experience. I think he's a depth signing, uh, so I like that. Other than that, there weren't really that many people available in free agency, um, you know, other than the big ticket guys. So I think this is something that they're going to address more in the draft. And maybe, you know, when they're post June one cuts, uh, they can bring in some other people switching over to defense. Uh, they had a pretty good offseason just in terms of bringing back their own free agents. I mean, from the cornerback position, they re-signed Kyle Fuller. They re-signed Prince of Mukamura. They re-signed restricted free agent Bryce Callahan for the slot. They brought, they released Marcus Cooper and brought him back on a one-year contract, which I kind of like for depth. You know, he has played at a, at a pretty good level. He just was bad last year, so I think bringing him back, you know, and on an earn it contract might change things up a little bit. And then bringing back Sheriff McManus, who I refuse to call anyone an ace, but a special teams captain, very important in the locker room and in the special teams room, and um, you know, obviously depth at cornerback. Outside linebacker is a massive need for us, and there were not a ton of people available in free agency. I think this is definitely something that we will be addressing with maybe more than one pick in the draft. Uh, We did bring in Aaron Lynch, who has familiarity with Vic Fangio's system. He's been playing a little subpar over the last couple of years, but did have his best rookie year under Fangio. So hopefully he can provide some depth and maybe even, you know, step back up uh, into a starter role. We shall see, but there is not much depth behind him and Leonard Floyd. So he needs to step up. But, you know, I think we, we addressed that in the draft as well. Defensive line, we brought back John Jenkins, who was on the roster last year. I think that's purely for depth. I like that because obviously depth can't hurt us here. There's no guarantee he makes the roster. However, you know, he he knows the system. So I think that was a smart one. Special teams, pretty significant. We brought in kicker Cody Parkey from the Dolphins. Uh, We signed him to a multi-year contract. So this is not just like a one-year deal or a camp leg. This is someone that we want to be our kicker for the future. Very accurate. Pretty decent from long. Very good from 40. Uh, Obviously, the guy's just got to adjust to the win. But uh, I'm glad we did that. Pat O'Donnell, we brought back as the punter. I believe we only brought him back on a one-year deal, so it's not quite as you know significant as the Cody Parkey signing. And we brought back Patrick Scales, the long snapper. I don't know if there's a giant crop of long snappers out there, but uh, at the very least, no, he's been in the league for a while, and Ryan Pace is familiar with him. So that's everything from the offseason, which obviously was a lot busier than people think. You can't do everything in free agency, but I think we did a lot to strengthen the roster and enough that's going to affect how we draft. I definitely want to get into the draft now. Uh, Before we get into bear specific needs and and how I think the the draft is going to play out, I did want to kind of go through the draft order for I'm going to focus on the top 10 picks, but I'm going to read off the top 15 because I think some of these people are going to be in play for trade ups. Uh, so at number one, we've got the Browns, we've got the Giants, Jets, Browns again, Broncos, Colts, Buccaneers, Bears at eight, Niners, Raiders at 11. We have the Dolphins, then the Bills, then Redskins, then Packers, then Cardinals. Two names I also wanted to highlight a little bit further down. The Bills are at 22, so they have two picks in round one. And then the Patriots traded up a few weeks ago. So now they have two picks in the first round. All right, that leads into teams who need quarterbacks. This is a quarterback-heavy league, quarterback-led league, as it should be. It is the most difficult position in sports. But there are teams who have some some people in place if they think of their franchise guys, and there are some teams who absolutely do not or barely have a placeholder. All right, here are some teams who I think need quarterbacks and also teams, I think, who may trade up to get quarterbacks. Uh, the Browns at one. The Giants may be at two. Uh, Gettleman traded away Pierre Paul, so that creates a need at the edge. They also need help on the offensive line. So, But, you know, Eli Manning is not getting any younger, uh, so they could go QB at two. Jets at three would be kind of crazy if they didn't. I mean, I, I love I love me some McCown, but that's not the answer for your future. Denver Broncos at four. You know, I think there are good odds that they do it. They did sign Keenum on a two-year deal, so that they might think that that gives them some cushion and then they don't have to uh, give up picks to try and go grab someone in this draft. Uh, the Dolphins, you know, I feel like there is a pretty big need there, um, again, but there's someone who would have to trade up. I just don't think Tannehill is doing the job and there's no one else behind him. Buffalo Bills, I think, are a pretty likely candidate to do it. They have two picks in the first round, so it does give them some ammunition to move up, and there is a need there. Cardinals, 
same thing. I'm not exactly sure how much ammo they have to move up in the draft. However, they signed Sam Bradford, you know, the guy who's made more money than half the league over the last several seasons and can't really stay healthy, and Mike Glennon. So I don't know if I need to say anything else. I think a wild card team who may try and move up would be the Ravens. They don't really have anyone behind Flacco, and Flacco has not really been getting it done the last couple of years, and I think everybody there is on the hot seat. So they might be a possibility, but it's unlikely. And then someone who came flying into this list the la- over the last two weeks, the Patriots made some trades and now have two picks in the first round. So I don't know. I, I it, To me, it seems like they might be moving up to grab one of the top four QBs because Brady's 41. Belichick wants to continue winning, and he has no one other than Brian Hoyer behind Brady. So I would not be surprised if Belichick made the move up. Okay, so if some of those people, obviously all of them can't take quarterbacks, but some of those teams take QBs, uh, that's going to push some people down that the Bears are interested in. However, there are going to be some other teams who may not be QB who could kind of be in our way for some of those players. I think the Giants, if they don't go with QB, they might look to offensive line or putting someone on the edge. I think the Broncos, if they don't go QB, same thing, offensive line. Cornerback, they did trade away uh, to Lieb, so I think that might be an option for them as well. The Colts, I think they need help at every single position, uh, <laughs> but at least how the draft is kind of breaking out from a player standpoint, I think offensive line, an edge for them. The Bucks kind of need a lot. I feel like cornerback, safety, offensive line, and inside linebacker for them are needs. And the Browns, not at one, obviously, but at four. I mean, the Browns have pick number one and pick number four. Who knows where they're going to go? They're the Browns, but I think they might go edge there. So that'll put the Bears in competition with, with at least five teams for uh, guard, edge, inside linebacker, cornerback, and safety, which are all Bears needs. And all of this leads up to positions that the Bears need to go after in the draft. And we will jump into that right now. Uh, personally, I think it's a tie between offensive line and edge rusher. I think it would be edge rusher far and away if there were not such a good offensive lineman available. I I really think that we should not draft for need. We should go best player available. And so in my mind, it's offensive line, edge rusher, inside linebacker, safety, and corner. Best at those positions. Let's run through that right now. Best guard, Quentin Nelson. I, there's not even a close second. Watch the tape. The guy is an absolute beast, can do it all. Um, so, I, honestly, if Quentin Nelson is is available, I'd be pretty surprised if they did not grab him, given the fact that he stand is a coach on the Bears now who coached him for the last four years. Best tackle, Mike McGlinchey, also from Notre Dame. I really don't think he's worthy of a top 10 pick, um, so that's why I didn't include him in the biggest needs. Edge rusher. Obviously, this is important on any team, but specifically for us, we have no depth behind Floyd and Lynch of any experience whatsoever. So number one edge rusher available, Bradley Chubb. I I do not think he's going to fall to us, but if he does, I don't know how you don't pick him. You know, if he's there with Nelson, that's a good issue to have in that war room for Ryan Pace. After him, I've gone back and forth between a couple of players, Harold Landry and Marcus Davenport. I give Landry the edge as my number two if Chubb isn't there. 6'3", 255 pounds. If you watch the film on this guy, he has he has a lot of the moves down already. He's very good with his hands, and I, and I honestly think he's only going to get better. So I think some people have Landry a little bit lower on the board. I have him high up as the best edge available if Chubb is off the board. Then I have Marcus Davenport. I, I really like this guy on tape, but... Playing for Texas San Antonio, he has not necessarily gone up the best talent in the nation. I think he's really good. I just prefer Landry to him. Uh, And then it it kind of falls off a bit. Arden Key, we've kind of heard about him. If you watch tape on him, he's actually, you know, he's 6'6", 240, so he fits ideally in Fangio's system. But he's had problems off the field. And if you look at a lot of his sacks, a lot of them are coming unblocked off the edge. A guy that I just wanted to mention that, you know, I don't think is going to be taken in the first round, but who I really like at the edge is Sam Hubbard from Ohio State. Uh, 6'5", 265 pounds. I don't really like saying he's a high motor guy, but like he's he definitely (laughs) plays through the whistle and the guy is super fun to watch. So I'm, you know, I'm thinking he might be drafted bottom of the first, maybe top of the second. Okay, 
inside linebacker is an absolute need for the Bears as well. Danny Trevathan has been great when healthy, but he has not been healthy. And Nick Kwiatkowski, you know, I'd say he's a player that's coming on, but he's not by any means an amazing starter, especially if Trevathan goes out. There are some really good guys uh, that I think fit at the top of the draft class at the inside linebacker position. Rokon Smith out of Georgia. Wow, the guy is sideline to sideline, making the calls. You can tell he's a leader. I've heard nothing but good things about him. I don't care if he's 6'1", 240. Put him in the middle. He's going to be able to call the plays. Him next to Trevathan, that's a great combination. And if for some reason Trevathan goes out and Kwiatkowski plays and Rokon Smith plays, Rokon Smith immediately becomes the middle, immediately becomes the guy who calls the plays, gets everyone in position. Love that guy. Okay, next is Tremaine Edmonds. Really fun to watch. He's played really well thus far. He is 19 years old. Um, He's one of those players that, you know, you hear he's got the potential, which makes me extremely nervous, and I assume it makes you guys nervous because we don't want someone who has potential. We want someone who is going to start day one, be a leader, be a contributor, change the face of the defense. Can he someday? Can he right away? I don't know. I don't know. Um, You know, the comparisons that have been made about him, Brian Urlacher being one of them, I think is completely unfair and and also unrealistic. I do understand the size comparison. He is 6'5", 255, very similar to Urlacher, can run sideline to sideline. Great athlete. Just don't think that uh, that he's the number one ILB available. Leighton Vander Esch from Boise State. I think he's going to end up being a 4'3 linebacker somewhere, starter, going to be great going to be able to captain a defense I just you know I don't think that he I just don't think he's worthy in the number eight pick and Rashawn Evans is a great player coming out of that Alabama system I just don't think that he's going to go at eight and he's the fourth linebacker on my board uh moving down to corner you know we brought back Fuller we brought back Amukamura we brought back Marcus Cooper we we brought back Bryce Callahan to work the slot uh so I don't think that this is a major need you can never have enough good corners but given all the needs the bears have i don't know about cornerback but if they do go corner here's here's how i have these guys ranked on my board denzel ward from ohio state great man cover guy he's a little bit short but you know we know how that works in the nfl i mean i know vic prefers the 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 guys with length but the kid's a stud he's really good in man he's good in zone he's not afraid to tackle so he's the number one guy on my board josh jackson from iowa is next He's not as athletic as Denzel Ward. He's definitely not as fast. He's definitely not as good man-to-man. He has production. He had eight interceptions last season. The knock on him so far has been speed, but I think he's going to go high. He's my number two. Uh, My number three, four, and five, I've got Mike Hughes from Central Florida, Jair Alexander from Louisville, and Isaiah Oliver from Colorado. I think Hughes actually would probably benefit if he would have stayed an extra season. Uh, Alexander, 5'10", 195. He's missed a lot of opportunities, and he's very, he was very bad in the red zone last year. Oliver is 6'1", 190. He's a decent cover corner, not a lot of picks. He tackles with his head down a lot, which is not something good for his health and definitely is not good for at the NFL level. So that's corners. And we go to then we go to safety, which safety is an interesting one here. I do think we have a big need at safety. I know Adrian Amos. I know he had a good season last year. Forced a couple of fumbles, had a touchdown return, but you know, as far as interceptions, been pretty non-existent. So I think there is a need there. I really, really like Eddie Jackson. I knew he was going to be a starter from day one. When, you know, if if his leg was healthy, he had a great season last year. So we need to put someone next to him. Number one on my board is Minka Fitzpatrick, hands down. Six foot, two hundred five pounds, coming out of Alabama system. The guy can do everything. Uh, we have not had a player like that in the Bears defense. I don't know that I can think of ever. Uh, he can play both corner. No, he can play all three corner positions. He can play both safety spots and they move them around at linebacker as well. Guy is a total stud. I would grab him if he's available and some of our other guys are not. I would grab him and I'll talk about the order that uh, I prefer everybody in a little bit. Next would be Derwin James. Six foot two, 215 pounds coming out of Florida State. If you want someone who is a hitter, this is your guy. He, you know, he reminds me a lot of the guys playing in Seattle the last couple of years. Big hitter, good in space, good athlete. He's not as fast or as versatile as Fitzpatrick. I did notice him eye in the backfield a lot, and he seems to take some bad angles, which I think 
is something that can be cleaned up pretty quickly with an, with an NFL coaching staff. But that's, you know, those things put him at number two for me. And my number three guy, which I don't think he is going to be picked in the top half of the draft, is Justin Reed out of Stanford. Six foot, 205 pounds. He's a great tackler. I do notice that he gets fooled on pump fakes often, and he's definitely had some issues covering the slot. So he's my number three. I know there's a lot there, but I think all of that's necessary to, to really dig in and, and get to where we're at now. So here are my rankings for the Bears if these guys are available at the eighth pick. Uh, number one, Bradley Chubb. Number two, Quentin Nelson. Number three, Rokon Smith. Number four, Minka Fitzpatrick. Number five, Harold Landry. Number six, Denzel Ward. Number seven, Tremaine Edmonds. And number eight, Derwin James. So here's my reasoning for these. Uh, Bradley Chubb, I think, is an obvious. He is by far the best edge rusher in the draft. Doubtful that he ends up falling to us, but you never know what's going to happen with QBs. He could be there. Number two is Quentin Nelson, and I'll tell you, I make no secret about how much I like this guy. He is one of my favorite. He is my favorite player in the draft. I've, you know, now I've just sold myself on it again. If the two of them are available at eight, that's a tough one. So let's leave that as a tie for now. Rokon Smith is my number three. If those two guys are off the board, I would definitely consider Rokon. He's someone who you put in that middle linebacker spot, and he stays there for 10 years. Number four, Minka Fitzpatrick. He's someone who Fangio can do a lot with, and I don't know that the Bears have had a player like that ever that I'm aware of. It reminds me a lot of Tyron Matthew, which is just somebody who can do a lot of things, so he would be fun for Fangio to play with. And my number five is Harold Landry. Depending on how everything works out and if all these guys that uh, that I have listed above are gone, Landry is someone that you could grab at edge. He's the best player there. Number six, Denzel Ward. I don't know that we have a giant needed corner, but again, you can never have enough corners, so you go with Ward. He's the number one corner on the board. Number seven, Tremaine Edmonds. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Sky's the limit on this guy. He's 19 years old. I mean, you bring, it's a dream scenario, right? You bring him in on a rookie deal. You get that fifth-year option. Who knows what you're going to get with him? I mean, the guy's a great athlete. Uh, from what I can tell, he's not great at diagnosing plays just yet. And you don't know. Like, if, if I know a lot of that is instinct, but a lot of that is coaching as well. So I just don't know that he walks in day one and is going to be the starter. Just because you're a first-round draft pick doesn't mean they're going to force you on the field. He's not like Rokon, who I think will be a day-one starter. My number eight guy is Derwin James. He is definitely the kind of player that Fangio prefers. I would not be surprised if they grab him at number eight. Again, if all of these people are gone, or we don't know how the draft is going to play out. Uh, I think he'll be good in time. I just think that Fitzpatrick is a little bit better. So just to run through real quick again. Number one, Bradley Chubb. Number two, Quentin Nelson. Number three, Rokon Smith. Number four, Minka Fitzpatrick. Number five, Harold Landry. Number six, Denzel Ward. Number seven, Tremaine Edmonds. And number eight, Derwin James. Okay, guys, so there you have my breakdown. I just want to give you a little insight as to kind of how I've gotten to this point. I pretty much watched video on, uh, let's, let's call it the top 50 people as they've been shifting throughout the college season. And in the off season, uh, you know, I've done my own analysis of them. And obviously I read a lot of people that I respect who are draft analysts. You know, I, I like their insight. They may see something that I don't. They may have been at games. They may know the player. You know, I only have so much access, but I feel really good about the point that we're at right now. I think the Bears are in a very good position. I think they've had a great off season thus far ranging from hiring a great coaching staff to bringing in free agents. So Trubisky actually has some weapons around him, fortifying the defense, you know, and all of that leads to them sitting pretty good at that eight pick, especially if four quarterbacks go. I mean, I've listed eight players that I would assume are on most people's draft boards high. And if Pace has that decision to make at that point, it's only going to be good for us. I don't know that there's a bad pick, but there are definitely better picks, which leads to what I think is going to happen on draft day, the way the draft falls with, with some potential trades and everything like that. I think when the bears are on the clock, the best player available and the person that I would draft would be Rokon Smith. I know some people are going to disagree, but that's really how this works. This is from me doing some work and, and formulating my opinion. And uh, I think that a lot of the players that I've mentioned are going to be off the board. This draft is deep, but the top 10 players on my board 
a lot of people are going to want these guys. And if four QBs go like I think they're going to go, that leaves three teams to take players that we potentially might want to draft. But then if you look at my rankings, that leaves five other people. So I think we're in a good position. And either way, I'm super, super pumped to see how this all works out. I really think the needle is pointing up with this new staff in place. It's not just... It's not just hope anymore. You know, I, I, I think there are some there's definitely some evidence. And this team wants to win now, which is refreshing because we haven't been winning a lot. So that wraps up Chapter One, the NFL Draft Preview Edition of the Jason Discusses Specific Topic Show. On next week's episode, I'm going to break down the entire 2018 Chicago Bears draft class. And we'll go over any other crazy shenanigans that happen on draft night. It's always there's always something interesting, and I'm sure there'll be more than one. On behalf of the AFDE Show and myself, thank you guys so, so much for listening. And please, remember to love each other, friends. We need that out there. Take care and have a great week.